Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Squadcast. I am definitely not Camille, but I'll be your <laughs> host for today. I am Jason, also known Wait. as AJ. Hey, <laughs> Surprise, that Caboose! This, this isn't just We're a really, meeting. it's not really just a great makeup job here. <laughs> <laughs> you look just like her. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, but joining us, oh, this is actually kind of loud here, but uh, joining us as usual, we have Aaron, aka Caboose. We've got Alex Radpuppy, and joining us from the Squad State website, we have Ophili, who's one of our writers there making fantastic articles, um, which you should definitely check yeah. out, including uh, some articles like the five biggest betrayals in World of Warcraft history, five great MMOs to play on Nintendo Switch, uh, and all that good stuff. So do check that out on squadstate.com. Um, what about her biggest article? What's that? What about her biggest article? All right, if you're going to call me <laughs> out on it, I was trying to avoid it, but okay. Alex really, really wants to recommend everyone to check out the Pokemon Masters EX is getting players horny on Twitter. So if you want to find out why why that is, <laughs> my best article ever. <laughs> what can you can you give us like the 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 brief, the Coles notes of that? What what is causing the thirst for Pokemon over there? Um, well, if you translate Pokemon Masters X into a hashtag, you can read that different ways. Oh, okay, yeah. The S from Masters <laughs> goes and joins EX. I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, why Alex likes it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. But today we've got some great topics to go over, including, let me get my topic list up here. We're going to be talking about the Tokyo Game Show, which took place last week, including some highlights, some of our favorite highlights of the Tokyo Game Show 2020. We're going to talk about Activision uh, getting hacked and what that means for the future of privacy for gamers. And we're also going to talk about some rumors of Metal Gear Solid coming to PlayStation 5 and PC. Really hope that's true. And then finally, we're going to talk about another gaming streaming service because there isn't enough apparently amazon has unveiled their luna, <laughs> luna right because i keep saying luma because i've been playing mario Thanks, galaxy numbers, and yeah. i'm like wait a minute one's the star the other one is this the cloud the cloud yeah, yeah the cloud. <laughs> uh so we have a lot to talk about there so grab yourselves a drink make yourselves comfortable and let's have a good time here on the squadcast um so let's get started with well let's get started with the importance of how have all of you been for the past week? We haven't seen you guys in a week. Had a good week. Good week. No, it's been good. It's been a good week. <laughs> yeah, it's been a good, a busy one, but a good one. What have you been? I've had what, a pretty busy week too. What have you guys been gaming, playing? Among oh, Us. Watch. Among Us too. Yeah. League. Yes. I actually stopped playing Among Us, but I kind of want to get back into it. So, caboose. Alex, you just <laughs> let me know. <laughs> You just let me know. <laughs> I just feel like it's going to be so funny already. <laughs> it's going to be toxic. Okay, you know, cool. I've been avoiding like the viralness of the game. I'm like, ah, it's too popular. I'm not going to dive into that. But it like, sh should I? Should I just take the yes. plunge? Yes. Yeah. You don't well, you're, you're already a monster. I mean, yeah. <laughs> So you're what, already do, what does that mean as someone who doesn't know the game? What are you guys going to do to me as being the imposter? Does not mean I get to like, does that mean I kill all of you? Hunt you down yeah. while you hunt us down. You guys are all gonna yeah, hunt me down. Yeah, we've been looking out for you. Yeah, and we're gonna kill you. Eject you. We've already space. figured out that it's you, so you're gonna. Yeah, go you're around. kind of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I usually die first, so don't ask me. I'm a ghost. <laughs> so how do you find out who the imposter? Like, I'm sorry, I'm a complete idiot on this, but no, how do you no. find out who the imposter is? You just you just kind of break it down. You got to like follow people or like figure out where people's positions were on the map, and you just got to try. Figure out who's lying. Yeah, you yeah. just got to. Basically, if someone doesn't kill you, they're good. Oh. <laughs> or are they? Game of logic, man. <laughs> or are they? Puzzle. Logic. Oh, am I? Sometimes you galaxy brain it, and you just don't kill for a couple rounds. Mm -hmm. Let everyone gain your trust. Uh, and then that's when you strike. So when when you suspect. Well, now I know your strategy. <laughs> so when you suspect Wait. someone. It, when the whole group suspects someone, do they like kill that person or just get rid of them? We vote them out, actually. Usually you're supposed yeah. to like wait to hear their side of the story, but most of the time it's oh. like, I think it's that person and then everyone votes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's and like, if they say that what they did, they're more suspicious. And everyone it's looks the random. same, right? Like, there's no discriminatory way of, like, you know, like when you play a game of Clue, everyone knows it's like the Colonel Mustard all the time. 
Well, it's yeah. red, blue, yellow, okay, light so blue. So there might be some color. Um, yeah, and you can have a hat. Judgment. Oh, you nice. can have a hat. Yeah, you can have a hat. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good selling feature. I want a nice hat. Yeah. Um, let's get into our first topic. Tokyo Game Show 2020. I have to say, I paid attention to mostly one thing, which is Hyrule Warriors, mm -hmm. um, the Calamity. I actually don't know what the full title is Ganon's because that, right? it's like Calamity of Ganon or something, or Ganon's Calamity. Uh, Age of Calamity. Age of Calamity, that's what it is. Uh, big fan of Hyrule Warriors, big fan of Breath of the Wild, and you're basically putting the two into one game, both games which I put 100 hours into each. So I've been really hyped for this. Um, we got a new character over the weekend. So I think Impa, yeah, Impa was confirmed as kind of the ninja character. Are you guys into Breath of the Wild or Hyrule Warriors? Is, is this like stuff you guys like, or is this just kind of me on Zelda Island by myself? <laughs> you guys are not Breath of the Wild fans? Breath of the Wild. I, I am. I like yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Great. Right, Actually, my I think was, yeah. dog is named after a divine beast. Really? Which one? Is it? Um, the bird, Meadow. Oh, cool. I don't yeah. remember the names. I'm not that hardcore of a fan. Oh, okay. I just like killing He's things, solving hardcore. puzzles. Kubus, how could you not have played Breath of the Wild? It's like one of the, the best uh, games ever. Redefined the open world genre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I may or may not have played my Switch for a total of like maybe 10 hours. And what? then just yeah. with my brother. Wait, what did you I, even I play? play? Okay. You're missing played... the good stuff. Yeah. I played a decent amount on my Switch, and it was it was really useful when I was traveling a lot last year. But that that was the one game I should have bought. Like, it, but the only thing is, I didn't want to get consumed, uh, and I probably would have. So I don't know. I just I just didn't grow up on the Zelda craze, you know. Like that just yeah. actually Breath of the Wild is a good one, even if you don't like Zelda. It's, it's I just a good game. game. Yeah. yeah, it's a good game. Not even a good Zelda. A good game. Just you don't need to know the story or anything. You just like run around and fly sometimes, even <laughs> and eat apples. Yeah, don't and... you have like a little like thing you hang on to and uh so what um a warrior's game is is basically you hack a bunch of enemies and kill everything as a overpowered warrior. And with Hyrule Warriors, it was the first time that Nintendo took one of their IPs, mashed it with the Dynasty Warrior gameplay, and so you play as all of these Zelda characters and you do it. So it was, it was the, the story in the original was kind of like you crossed all of the timelines and you played different characters and you just beat everybody up. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. what's so big about Age of Calamity is the fact that, um, so Breath of the Wild is a story and game that takes place 100 years after this great calamity happens, aka the end of the world. Uh, this game puts you in that story a hundred years before Breath of the Wild. And oh. they put you fighting like the hordes of monsters um, as Link and company. Now, mm, cool. without really getting into spoilers, you know, everyone knows it's an apocalyptic event that doesn't end well. So a lot of people are like, this is probably not going to be a very happy, a game that ends on a good note. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it is going to be one of the first times we see like uh, um a Warriors type game have a canonical story that is actually tied to other Zelda games, which that's the big exciting thing uh, for me with this game. Um, otherwise, Ooh. was there anything that you guys cared about from the Tokyo Game Show that is not Zelda? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they they showed off some some stuff for Resident Evil Eight or Resident Evil Village as it's being titled. Uh, nothing like crazy. But there is some new gameplay that they showed off, and there's just overall like development insight or like developer insight about the game. Um, they gave us a, a good new look at Chris Redfield and how he's looking in this game. And they went in a little bit about kind of the, the, the new main character, um, which I'm stupid and can't really remember his name, uh, from Resident Evil 7. And overall, like they're just saying, like, hey, it's going to be scary again. So get ready to be spooked about it. But one of the big things is a lot of people were starting to expect that Resident Evil eight was going to be a next gen only thing alongside coming to PC. Cause right now that's all it's being reported to be like released on. However, during the Tokyo game show presentation, one of the producers of the game did say, uh, and this is a quote directly from them, that while Resident Evil Village is being developed specifically for next generation consoles and PC, the team is looking into delivering the experience on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One as well. 
And it didn't look like from the initial reveal back in the PlayStation event in like June and then this latest PlayStation showcase and as well what they showed at the Tokyo Game Show that this was meant to be a next gen only game. It doesn't look like one of those technically demanding games. And I also got to wonder, especially considering what they did with RE7 having the VR component and being able to play it entirely in VR, if they want to do that as well for Resident Evil Village. They did so. seem to to switch the I don't know the style of this Resident Evil because we're going yep. more to zombie style creepy that we liked yep. about the first Resident Evils and we liked exactly. it in the sevens. So I think they're going more back to their roots, and hopefully that's good news. I agree. Uh, Res like one of the biggest complaints about Resident Evil Six is that it was just too much of a action game, and it didn't didn't feel like a Resident Evil game. And Resident Evil 5 was starting to steer in that direction, but there was still an element of that creepiness and and the horror that was still there. But it was starting to get, you know, big set pieces and crazy boss battles. And, you know, Chris really? Redfield's shoving a giant boulder into lava. Like, it, it was just getting random. But then, like, then Resident Evil 6 really amped it up and people were like, yeah, we don't like this. So they finally took a step back and kind of redid the formula that worked most for Resident Evil. And also, I mean, you got to give credit to something like PT and what they did with that, what Kojima did with that, even though that didn't end up becoming a game, it was just the demo. Uh, but having the first person element and being so locked into that character and the environment made it that much more scary. And I have to imagine that that's what kind of allowed Resident Evil 7 to end up being this first person game and what is now created uh resident evil 8 to continue that whereas they're also you know they did the remakes in resident evil 2 and 3 to stick with that third person shooter element they had from the uh from the good like you know re4 re5 games so i mean they're, they're doing different things but i'm glad that they're just sticking to the horror elements that's what works with resident evil the most i don't want to play an action game when i'm playing resident evil i don't mind a couple of set pieces or big boss battles but i want to feel fear if that doesn't sound weird, but like... Yeah, what? especially before bed, right? Exactly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think that's with the remake, actually. The, the remakes were good. They took back all the oh, elements, the play. umbrella stuff. And yeah, you yeah. get that, that gut feeling because you can't have any more like turning a corridor and facing the enemy. It won't exactly. happen again. Mm -hmm. But now you, know, you need to count your ammo, you need to hide. And I think they're just choosing different psychological effects to get us mm -hmm. scared and it's cool if they can explore that a bit better in raccoon city so as a, yeah. di as a disclaimer i've never played any resident evil game I, I actually plan on going through the entire franchise probably next year once i finish my castle okay, good. uh also other disclaimer i i really hate horror games i don't like being scared <laughs> Uh, same because of resident nobody evil nobody really <laughs> likes horror games then why do you play them <laughs> for you yeah. Um, no, for real, I hate horror games because of Resident Evil. Sometimes you won't, you just gotta. It's just fun to be scared. So is it? Nobody, nobody goes to a horror movie like. Oh man, I am ready to see. Well, maybe some people do go to horror movies. <laughs> it's the best stuff. I get. My but opinion. usually, I'm like there with a group of friends to be like. Yo, y'all ready to get scared and and like freak out? Like you know. <laughs> I get my fear from opening twitter every morning and that's more than enough <laughs> fear for my day. especially this year like it's winning over any horror yeah. game that's out there but anyways so as an, sure. as an outsider i do know that the resident evil as you said has kind of two branches of, of fandoms there's the the kind of more survival horror route and then there's the more actiony survival route from what i understand which one tends to be more popular with the resident evil or, or has it kind of split the fandom into two even camps without a doubt it's the more horror side that people are are all about for resident evil it's the reason why after resident evil 6 they kind of like completely overhauled the way that they present these games especially moving into resident evil 7 mm -hmm. bringing in a new character although still like being in the in the world of the game and you know chris redfield ends up showing up in resident evil 7 and so it's still a resident evil game in terms of the world but they wanted to just do something brand new and kind of go back to the roots of the game, which is horror. That's what everyone likes from Resident Evil. And that's why 
like RE6 got so much flack because it was just a straight up action game. Like there was there was like sprinting through you oh. like you're never worried about running out of ammo, you're never worried about your resources. That that is part of the fear as well, is not just whether or not when you turn this corner something's about to pop up, but it's just that if something's gonna pop up, I only have three bullets. Right. You know, that's that's what makes it so much fun is how little resources you're provided in these games because you have to be like super careful with every right. bullet you use. And I love that. That's what that's what makes these Resident Evil games so good. And yeah, RE7 is a really good game. I, I'm not big into VR, but I imagine that game is 10 times scarier oh, God. playing it in VR. Yeah, I tried the demo on VR and I couldn't. <laughs> uh, I, th- I, th- I think I just put the, the helmet on, the headset on, and, and I just no, uh, no, can't. Have any of you have... have... Has everyone else played a horror game in VR? Like, have you tried that? Nope. Because, I because, well, not quite as scary. That's but, terrifying. Because instead of scary. Like, fly at you, yeah, like when you get stuck in the like onslaught of cubes, it can be pretty. Yeah. Like, where am I? <laughs> but yeah, so VR. I, I played one where you're in a roller coaster in a horror like theme park. Yeah. And things are popping until dawn spin off. Oh jeez. With the clowns and you're just like in a yeah in a train and you can't do shit besides shooting at people right. and they're jumping at you and you can't you just you can't stop. Or I've seen others and you where die. like you like... hear things coming from behind you and then you look and there's nothing and then you look back and then something like screams and yells at you like that. You know, it's one thing to do that with your thumbs on a (laughs) controller and another one when you are physically moving your head. Hard pass. It's literally living out like the horror movie. Uh, Heart attack in a box. No, thanks. (laughs) Um, But, you know, you said that the the next one, it's we're at eight now. It's going into eight that this is one that you're talking village. Um, You said it didn't look too next gen, but one thing I think that actually this type of game can really win from next gen technology is specifically ray tracing, because ray tracing is the thing that makes everything looks a lot more real, renders lighting and shadows right. more realistically. Like I think in a horror yes. genre, that's where next gen ray tracing will really shine compared to any other game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, True. that subtlety could really add to the exactly to the atmosphere. Uh, and I agree. That's something that if you play RE8 on next gen, you'll probably benefit from in terms of the like immersion of it and the experience you could get. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad that because, like I said, like, when you look at it, it just doesn't look like it's supposed to be the next gen Resident Evil game. You know, it just I mean, maybe maybe in terms of load times or environments or whatever, like expo- exploration and, and all that that they could offer. OK. But just from the trailers, my initial thought was, oh, this is probably coming to current gen, right? Yeah. I didn't even realize until I saw reports of, oh, it might come to current gen after all, that that wasn't going to be a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I had already assumed that that was going to be a thing. But I, I'm, I'm definitely going to play it on next gen. I got got my pre-orders finally, uh, PS5 and that. Series X. I'm, yeah. I'm locked in, so I'm all good. Uh, so I'm definitely going to try it out on next gen and I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. Alex, did you get your PS6 pre-order? Uh, I can't, we're not going to let that one go. <laughs> What's that? I have, I have information, but I'm not supposed to tell you about that. Okay. <laughs> can we, can she we cannot, can come over and play it though when you get it? Maybe. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> okay. It's a secret for us. Okay. Yeah. Keeping us. Um, we just tweeted out. To your point, oh shit! To your point of next gen, I don't think I think we're gonna see for the next year or two at least a lot of the games they're just gonna come out to current gen because you're talking about you know a user base of over almost 200 million, let's say 150 million between Xbox and PlayStation 4, um, and games between these gens, it's not such a it's not it's not a matter of can the game run it's more like the pc world where it's like you can run this game on low settings medium settings or high settings and basically i think for the next little while next gen is all going to be about running on high settings Mm -hmm. versus current gen is going to be your low setting option yep um yeah a lot of people just got their hands on series x's and they were showing off the tech of uh like the the quick loading times and yeah you know there's there's new features like you can you can essentially have like six games all like paused in place at once that you can switch between. What? I didn't see at that. Any time. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty insane. Next gen is going to be legit. Mm-hmm. Wow. I do have the improved the loading times because it's a pain on PS4 right now. 
like you want to start a game you have time to go get a coffee walk the dog come back and it's not even ready yet yeah might as well and you can't yeah. be downloaded yeah. yet it's especially insane. if anyone if anyone here plays like destiny or gta online battlefront like, 2 those, uh, battlefront those are battlefront. Gonna from it the most uh so i'm excited to see how much how much better those experiences can be with those quicker loading times mm -hmm. to pull us back into the tokyo game show topic though uh yeah. resident evil there was also <laughs> nef i know there's a netflix uh adaptation that was announced no. a movie um, yeah. is it a movie or a show it's an amazing one I think it's a movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's an yeah. animated movie. All right. And it's called, oh, no, I closed the tab. <laughs> Infinite, Infinite Darkness. Infinite Darkness. Yeah. yeah. And it's coming back to Raccoon City with mm -hmm. two former readers. Um, oh, as wait. Well. Yeah. Uh, I'm reading. It says a new CG anime series on oh. the YouTube because There are two series, I think, because there's Infinite Darkness and they talked about another series with okay. the producer from The Walking Dead. So I'm not quite sure which one is which because one is announced and one is planned. Okay. So, oh, okay. So it is a show then? Well, it looks know. like they're testing the waters yeah. with a film. Maybe. Probably. Right. Maybe. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I don't see why they would do two series, like one year apart. Doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. So they're Maybe. Saying, they're saying the Who CG knows? and... CG anime series. So there's not just anime mm -hmm. now. There's CG anime. It looks good, by the way. Mm -hmm. This trailer looks good. Coming uh, 2021, and they say it's a it's a series. Yeah, it looks very ominous. It looks very Resident Evil, which I'm hyped about. Mm -hmm. Leon's in it. He's a classic character, yeah. so I'm interested for sure. I'll watch it. They they've done <laughs> this before. This isn't the first sort of CG animated thing that we've seen, you know, like Final Final Fantasy movies have happened. We've seen Final Fantasy movies like this. Yeah, but uh, there's good. definitely been a Resident Evil movie like this before. This isn't the first time it's happened. Yeah. I'm almost positive. Unless almost. I'm dumb. I, I could be dumb. <laughs> I'm going to search this up. That's possible. I mean, there's so many zombies yeah, everywhere. You could be dumb. Either way, it's, it's interesting that you're seeing a lot of these IPs <laughs> come out, like gaming IPs come out with pretty much Netflix adaptations. And, you know, recently, I, I find the shows have been really good compared to, you know, traditional video game movie adaptations. I know you guys talked about that mm -hmm. before. Um, mm -hmm. but th these series have been good. Like, uh, was it two years ago, Castlevania came out with the series? That's when they launched. And I know season three just came out. I had never been a Castlevania fan. Watched the series, got into the lore. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, Dracula is a cool character and everything. Got into the video game series actually since last year. I've been playing. I'm, I'm trying to play through the entire franchise, every Castlevania game ever. And here we are a year and a half later, and I'm still going through it. Um, but these Netflix adaptations are, I think, really good ways to pull in uh, new players to those IPs. Yeah. yeah. They're blending the limits between the movies, the series, and the games. Because even on Netflix, you have movies you can interact with, like... Um, Black Mirror, Bandersnatch, where you can decide yeah. which path the hero should take. They did even a, a new one with a breakable Kimmy Schmidt, with this, which is a comedy, and you can pick what to do. So I think they're just trying to, yeah, to blend both universes because most gamers are Netflix too, and it's the other way around. So okay, there were two uh, CG <laughs> movies for Resident Evil. One was Resident Evil Vendetta, which came out like a couple of years ago, I think 2017. And then there was one from like back in 2008 called Resident Evil Degeneration. Oh. You know what you watch following? I think they're both bad. That, that sounds <laughs> in line you know with what? a couple <laughs> years ago. <laughs> but okay. Time to change. They, they have done this before. And didn't, yeah. uh, I don't know if you know this, Alex, but didn't Riot come out with like a series as well for like the League of Legends world? Yeah, it's, it was announced, but it's not out yet. Oh, okay. Okay. But they want to do like an anime series, or animated, I should say, because it's it's like it's like CG, like that, like uh, the Resident Evil one. So it's a League fan. Yeah, it's oh, more okay. like Overwatch, I guess. Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah. So as a League cool. fan, does that like appeal to you at all? Or you're just like, eh, I'll just play the game, as usual. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely watch it. Uh, I I respect. Well, we talked about this last week actually, but like I respect what Riot is doing in the sense that they're kind of trying to be like the Disney of gaming where they're just like really putting all their stuff out there and really creating their characters and their universes 
and just like trying to make a, an empire really yeah it's going to be hard because they're facing other companies who do that for years like blizzard you see world of warcraft you see overwatch they already have plenty of lore and it's not brand new riot's trying but it's not the differentiating point i don't think they can compete with blizzard in that not right now at least really i mean i think they definitely are going in the right direction because yeah. uh, they did a good job of like creating virality is that a word I think it is. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Now. Now it is. Well, they did it with, yeah, the, it with the K-pop song, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, but you're, you're absolutely right. Like, Blizzard did a good job of, like, really making their lore and creating their worlds. Um, but I think Riot being a little bit less, uh, like, with their characters are a little bit less, like, I don't know what the word is, but to me, World of Warcraft is, like, a, like it's a lot. <laughs> But with riots, like you can kind of just like jump in and be mm -hmm. like, "Ooh, pretty characters." Mm -hmm. It's like, cool. The more content, yeah. the better. I find, yeah. I find the riot IPs intimidating because I'm like, "That's a lot of characters." And oh, really? Like oh, as okay. I as I enter this world, I'm like, you know, I understand the MOBA formula, but I'm like, outside of this, which character should I root for? Who should I care? What are their backstories? Is there a backstory? What's That's going true. on in this world? That's true, actually. So um, hmm, good point. They they need some they need to handhold the noobs more is my opinion. actually that that is the truth that is what they they should do they've been I I actually that's been the thing I've been like wishing that they do but I mean I think, I think they're working toward it yeah because I even I hope into... so because Valorant's not user friendly either oh, I didn't yes. try that I tried Legends yeah of Valorant's a nightmare if you never played really like if you've never played Counter Strike it's gonna be really really hard for you. The game's basically just letting you do your, do your thing. And if you don't know how to do it, it's not going to tell good you. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, it's like good luck. You're going to die. Mm -hmm. This is random, but that sounds like my experience with, I don't know if you guys heard of um, the game Oxygen Not Included. So oh, yeah. it has like 10s out of 10s on Steam. And I was like, okay, this is really like positive. So I opened the game up and I, it's, it's like a survival strategy game or something. I open it up. There's no tutorial. There's nothing. There's just menus everywhere. And I, I kid you not, I stared at it for a good 30 seconds. I'm like, I don't know where to even start. I don't know what to do. There's like, you know, games are usually like, they, they like show like this little blip and they're like, hey, look here, look here, look here. Now do this. Here's your mission. Nope, none of that. So I'm like, okay, I'll close this. Let's try again some other day. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the same for Valorant, but with other players shooting you. Oh, it's a little mm. bit more stress. Before you can see them, of course. Yeah. 